You're listening to the Holistic Nootropics Podcast, your home for holistic, evidence-based cognitive enhancement strategies. And now your host, Eric Levi. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Holistic Nootropics Podcast, where we discuss using nootropics, biohacking, and nutrition to help you boost your cognition. My name is Eric, and if you are new to the podcast, then please take a second and remember to subscribe. If you are enjoying the podcast as it goes along, which you no doubt will, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave the podcast a five-star review, because that helps us climb the rankings in the old Apple podcast algorithm so more people can find us, more people get turned on to this great information that we're bringing. And of course, the world will be a better place. And if you are someone who is interested in finding the best quality nutritional supplements and nootropic products on the market today, then head on over to holisticnootropics.com and download a copy of my free supplement buying guide. This is a fully comprehensive guide that will walk you through step by step, ingredient by ingredient on how to find the best quality nootropic and supplement products on the market today, because let's face it, and my guests could probably attest to this, there is a lot of junk flooding the supplement markets today. A lot of companies are cutting corners. They're using cheap fillers and preservatives and all kinds of excipients to cut corners and and make their product sell for more, but pay less to actually put out a good product. You as the end user are the loser in this whole thing. You also have a lot of garbage being sold on Amazon, in GNC, in Walmart. So you don't want to buy that stuff. If you really want to get the best quality nootropics, then again, head on over to holisticnootropics.com, download my guide and help yourself find the best products, boost your body, boost your brain, boost your life. Okay, let's jump into today's podcast with the great Inessa Pano Maria Vaite. She is a holistic health expert who is on a mission to change the world by teaching people to harness the power of nature like she did to restore optimal health and well-being. She's the founder and CEO of Nessa's Hemp, <coughs> excuse me, a dominant player in the CBDA hemp industry. And I'm excited to jump into all this today with Nessa. Nessa, welcome to the Holistic Nootropics podcast. Thank you so much for having me here today. And I really loved your intro. I was kept smiling. I just couldn't wait. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, it's so true. I don't know what part you were smiling about if I, if you're smiling because I said your you name wrong or whatever. You straight to the point. Yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like the whole supplement industry, like we're, we're both in this industry and we both see like what is going on and, you know, how everybody's in it to just make money. And there's only a few really, truly authentic people who are actually trying to help people. And and just kind of from your story, what I've learned, you know, in researching you and the conversations that we've had back and forth, getting to know you a little bit, um, it seems like you're actually in this for the right reasons, which what's your problem? Why are you doing that? You can make so much more money if you were in this for the wrong reason. So um, I would love to know your story. Why, why are you in the supplement industry? Why are you selling CBD? What turns you on to CBD? Who are you? How do we learn more about you? Tell, give us the whole story. Give us, how did you get involved with this crazy world? Absolutely. It's definitely not by choice. Um, <laughs> not something that I personally choose to, especially when it comes to the hemp industry itself. But um, talking about when you said like, it's so many scammed products or people are there for wrong reasons. When I find out these reasons and when I really look into the industry in a very depth level, I literally became an investigator. So it was above and beyond sad. Actually, it was tragic what I saw. And I said, if some consumers don't even have a way or chance to even 10% to investigate what I did in a 100% scale, people have zero chance to know the truth, what's in these capsules, pills, herbs, plants, whatever you can come up with. So it's just so sad what's happening. And again, I'll share the story in a second, but I just want to say thank you for doing this. This is amazing. Like I've been having some quiet day, but you're already making me smile. Like I know I'm in the right place right now. (laughs) So yes, absolutely. Um, Where my story started, it did not start it because I chose to. It's actually, I've been through a lot of struggles in my life. And and of course it took me a little while where I became, I came actually in the United States 13 years ago. And um, I said, wow, this is a great country, but I had to go through a lot of struggles to be 
where I am today. And of course, I had to go through a lot of struggles where I was six years ago. But I just know that I was really, really sick. And I used to go in emergency room about nine months of the year. And they used to put me all kinds of medications. And more medications I take, worse I get. So it turned into this vicious cycle as a 25-year-old. Basically, I couldn't function. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk without the mask. I couldn't. People thought I have like tuberculosis or something. It was so bad and nobody knew the answers and I knew it can be like this so what I did I really start looking into the different lifestyle I looked into the herbs I looked into the plants changing completely my diet and stopped uh, social drinking what you call the vegan thing um, and of course workouts drink a lot of water good water because it's always definition when you see water you're talking about which water you're talking CBD which CBD like the old like it's always a definition what are you talking about so with that being said, um, I basically, about six years ago, six, seven years ago, I figured, okay, I fixed my health. I know like answer is not in pharmaceuticals, at least not for me, because I was able to transition myself from completely miserable human being, looked like 45 years old, even I was 25. Uh, I look sick, my hormones were out of balance. I mean, I had pimples all over the skin, deep pimples. And, uh, and I couldn't figure it out. So I fixed all these health conditions and I know the answer is in the nature. I just really kind of was happy where it was. So I kind of left it there and I just lived a healthy lifestyle. And I was like, okay, what's my purpose in life? Because I became to the point where I'm living this American dream. And, and then I'm begging God to tell me what's my purpose in life. And my mother calls me year after begging God to tell me what's my purpose in life and he she tells me that she got cancer stage three spreading to her liver and uh, it's a colon cancer and my first reaction is I said God finally answered my prayers and she literally thought I'm crazy because and she knows I'm not an alcohol she knows I don't take medications my mind is in the right place so she was literally FaceTime he's like no I'm dying I have six months left to live I said no you're not I said I will know everything that there risk for cancer and we will save your mother and we will save anybody who comes our way like your cancer is literally saving lives and the same day she called me which is was in Lithuania I was in the United States and she's in Lithuania um, so she called me at seven in the morning my time and 7 p.m United States which is here I was leaving already the country to save my mother basically and I started investigations, major research under cancer, and that's where I got into this world in the very deep levels with scientists, researchers worldwide. Until today, actually, I just got herbs from Africa Research Institute. Um, you know, I ship herbs from all over the world. So what happens is, uh, yes, I was able to help my mother. I started helping a lot of people, but then I... We did not do chemotherapy. We did not do radiation. And thank God she's very happy and healthy today. It's been years. She's enjoying in her life. But now what happened is when I came to the cannabis space, because I love all the plants and all the herbs, but when it came to hemp itself, when I studied hemp or came from how long it took us to have like here on the market, what happened 1970s where it became a, as a criminalized, right? So I was like, wow, this plant has so much to offer. And like this one plant covers so many critical points that for the human body in so many health conditions. Like for example, Artemisia or like uh, some, I don't know, any kind of type of herb you're gonna even zinc. It does a job, it does a great job, it does, but does a job to a certain level. And then you need another vitamin, another supplement, another whatever. So, but when it came to hemp, hemp was one of those plants that really covers almost everything. And I'm like, this is amazing. I was so pro him. So I said, okay, since everybody trusts me and everybody, you know, I have a high reputation here in Chicago when it comes to what I do. And I'm like, I'm responsible always to represent what's the best for people. And in order to have results for me to have a success rate and help people to overcome their health challenges, I do have to work the highest quality. Since people don't know they're busy working 24 seven, doing their living their lives, going to the games, taking care of their family, paying their bills, like they don't have time to really understand what is in those plants. So what I did, I really just basically 
contact the number one quality CBD products on the market. And I asked them if they would be willing to show me the proof of their quality if I would ever step in in their facilities. And they said, no problem. So basically, I got a permission for a lot of companies, and I start visiting one by one in the United States and really picking up a soil sample, water sample, all their manufacturer samples. And I said, I want to test these products myself because I want to know what's in it. You can show me lab results all day long, but I'm not going to trust it because you told me. Like, I'm going to, I have to make sure what's in it. So then I started getting, receiving my lab results from all these facilities and the number one organic producers in the country. I was devastated. Mm. That's the moment where I went back on my knees. I said, this is cannot to be true. This is cannot to be true. And I literally visited like highest quality, labeled, most marketed brands on the market. And I'm like, wait a minute, this plant can do so much from depression to right now we have COVID research, you name it, you name it. And now we have 99.9% .9 of the companies doing this whole scam thing. And then I start analyzing what a CBD is because there is no such thing as CBD in the plant. And I'm like, wait a minute. So when I realized the CBD is actually patented as a drug hmm. for the epilepsy, it's like, if it's patented for a drug for epilepsy, you don't have to be too smart to figure out it must be not natural. So if it must be not natural, then what it is and how dangerous or positive or good it is for your body. So then I start to really dig in into the research and talking to the top, top cannabis experts actually in the world. And especially Rafael from uh, Hebrew University, the one who discovered human endocannabinoid system. He's the one, the Nobel Prize winner for this, the whole industry being wake up again. So long story short is I realized this is a big scam. This is not how it's supposed to be happening. The industry is completely not regulated and like no one is willing to do what's right because it takes money, time and finances and effort. So why we need to do what's right? We have all this big thing going on where everybody wants to buy CBD, no matter what kind of price, all what we need to do, have a great marketing materials and make the heck out of money. And I said, that's not going to work at least for my people or the people that are sick. So what I did is basically... I was forced to open a company. I mean, I didn't care about company. Actually, I formed my LLC last minute and we already had a product on the market. So then I started getting into the soil. So I was thinking, okay, what the soil needs to be. So I started developing the first biological soil in the United States. Our one teaspoon of soil have more microbes than entire world of people. So the soil is so critical to have the soil that is biological. Why? Because the plant itself, like for example, hemp plant, right? The plant is there to clean the soil. So if the soil is not clean, that means plant is busy to, if the soil, if to clean the soil. That means plant is not focusing to become a highest power within themselves. So what happens if you don't have a clean biological soil that is not destroyed by chemtrails, that they had the natural sunshine light, that had the natural microbes and all the natural fertilizers, but that's not coming from men's made, whatever, or pharmaceutical grade or whatever, you're gonna be able to create that soil. And then plants are gonna be able to create themselves in the highest power and that highest power that means heal the people because those healing compounds are gonna be so powerful and so strong. So you're gonna transfer them correctly in the finished bottle and you're gonna be able to finally heal people. So that's all what I focused. So for two years, it took me two years to develop the soil. It took me two years to get the best genetics. It took me two years to get uh, all kinds of proprietary stuff that I'm not gonna share at the moment. But a long story short is, I never focused on CBD because CBD is not in the plant. CBD mm -hmm. is a, basically a dead version of the plant that happens in the laboratory through the harmful processes. And these processes a lot of times are harmful for your body too. And CBDA is the way if you take the plant and study the plant, if you're gonna see what the compounds we have in the plant, it is a CBDA. 
it's THCA, it's CBGA, it's mm. all the arsenic cannabinoids because that's what the plant is designed to have by nature. Now we have on the market that's called CBD, THC. I'm completely against THC. I never smoked weed in my life. And people say, you sell weed? No, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm so far away from that. Like, we have so much research shown already. And you don't have to go to research. I have a real case studies myself that I work daily where people are completely losing their brain. They can't make decisions if they are smoking weed for a period of time. And by the way, how you can smoke something that you actually burn and to take it in your lungs that turns into carcinogenic, how that can be healthy too. So again, my take on cannabis industry is great if we did what was right for the plant and people. But the way the whole industry is doing, it's almost basically another pharmaceutical version is going to create a lot of case studies or stories where plant is not good for you, THC is not good for you, CBD is not good for you. No, not because the CBD is not good for you. It's the way it's made is not good for you. Mm -hmm. And eventually they're going to come and say, this plant is not good for us. We need to remove it again. No, it's the way you guys did it. It's not good. So for me, what I see, I see a major threat right now in the cannabis industry because people not willing to do what's right. Wow, man, that, that's, uh, that's pretty amazing, that whole story. Um, just while you were talking, my brain was just like firing in so many different directions. Like I don't even know where to start with this whole thing. First of all, your, your, your personal story is amazing. You know, you, you're obviously a very caring person. And, um, I think that's just a testament to cannabis in itself that it, it, it draw, like, I loved Michael Pollan's book. Um, for the life, I can't think of the name of it, but he talks about, he talks about plants and it's like plants, you know, they control us and they have this sort of way about us. I, I, forget, I can't think of the name, one of the most popular books, but I think cannabis has a way of drawing people like the right people to it like you know even like with the thc the cbd even though that you like all that stuff you just said kind of put that aside for a second like people who want cannabis in their life are the type of people who are looking for some for like that next level deeper so you know it's like the fact that it was illegal for so long is so ridiculous because it really does draw people who are very caring and it, and it brings out a more caring side of people. I used to be a um, collector, like a bill collector. And, you know, sometimes at work, I would go and I would smoke some weed, and I'd come back and make these like collection calls. And I was always like way friendlier. Like granted, like I was totally useless. Like I couldn't like even use a copy machine. I, I actually broke my fax machine in my office. But like I'd call people and they'd be like, like, hey, man, can you can you pay the bill? And they'd be like, it's not going to happen this month. I'd be like, you know, dude, that's cool. Like live your life. Like life is short. Just have fun. Don't worry about it. You know? Um, and, and I was a pothead for a long time and it, it was like, whatever, that's a whole different story. But what you're talking about with CBD specifically is so interesting because CBD right now is, and, and hemp and THC and cannabis, it's a gold rush. And the problem is, is it's becoming corporate. And when you have this, what starts to happen is in every corporate setting is the quality is, is, um, is uh, sacrificed for profits. And so, so many people are just like, and it's the same thing in the supplement industry, whether it's hemp, vitamin D, protein powder, creatine, whatever. It's like, how can we make this so fast and get it on the market? And who cares what's in it? Who cares how we do it? Who cares where it comes from? Use the soil that grows it the fast. Use the process that extracts the fastest. Get it in the bottles. Who cares if it's clear bottles and the sunlight and the light de and the heat denatures it, whatever. Like, who gives a shit? Like, just get it on the market. Sell it for as much as you can because people will buy CBD because they think it's all this stuff. And I've always had my reservations about the CBD market because I've, I've used some of these products and I'm like, this is, this is junk. Dangerous. Like, what is this doing? It doesn't, like, I don't feel it. the one Dangerous. cannabis, the one CBD product I had was from this girl. I bought it from at my local farmer's market and she was like, and I knew the person who actually made it. There's no way she can make big batches of it. She just made it herself, like in her, her home. And it actually like, had an effect. And I'm like, oh, I guess this is what CBD is supposed to feel like. But I think you might've just blown a lot of people's minds in saying that CBD is not actually a part of the hemp plant. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because 
I didn't know that. I don't think most people really understand what even is the difference between CBD and hemp. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to make it because I can go and talk from the research and, you know, not everybody's going to be on the same level. So I'm going to make it very simple. So just imagine hemp plant is loaded with all kinds of different parts, like just like human body, you have liver, you have kidney, you know, and same as a hemp plant, they have all different parts. You have CBDA, you have THCA. So what happens is uh, now when people sell CBD, it's supposed to be that one specific organ or one specific part from the plant. But then you have all these other trillions of parts that they're supposed to work together. Mm -hmm. So what the whole industry started, the way industry started, this is where I saw the first time I was, I said, I wouldn't wash my feet with this product. This is how dangerous it is. Like these hemp plants were turned into the, looks like a cocaine powder, which is completely white powder. Mm -hmm. And then it looks into, they created this powder and they, put the liquids in whatever, coconut, whatever, carry oils, and it put in a finished bottle. And that's your isolate CBD part, right? It's completely, com again, should be completely illegal. In my books, it's deadly dangerous. But again, that's me. That's my personal experience. So what happens is, so just imagine CBD or TH CBDA, THCA or CBGA, those are completely different particles. They all do a little bit different of the job, but they all work together if they are together and they work the best. So the whole market usually focuses on just one specific compound. That means you have to separate from the other compounds. Let's see if I need to separate your liver from your body. You have all kinds of different compounds, your eyes, kidney, vision, everything, your cells, which is impossible to see to see your cells, right? But they're the most critical ones. You don't see those cells, right? Just grab hundreds of millions of cells from an arm. You don't see them, but they're most critical in the body. So what the whole industry is missing, they're focusing on one compound or maybe another compound. Instead, wait a minute, can we just have the whole plant as healthy and in a finished bottle as healthy? Like they don't want to focus on the whole plant. For me, and we have this entourage effect where we saw a lot on the people, when people using the whole full plant, and as long as it's biological, it's not toxic, right? It gives you completely different results. And now what kind of plant is always a definition. If the plant was organic and what does organic means? And based on organic, uh, our regulations, they allowed you to do parts per billion heavy metals. So that's the organic you want to do. You might have the whole plant, but now it's loaded with metals or fungi or microtoxins and you name it. So it's so important to really look for the full plant because it works together and it works the best on your body this way and make sure that plant was completely clean. In order to plan for plant to be completely clean and shown, always look for lab results. I mean, company says lab results, we have lab results or lab tested, tested from what? That they show like we have CBD in it. It's like, no, like people have to look for fungus, all kinds of bacteria, uh, toxins, mold. Mold is a big thing right now. Almost every CBD product is loaded with mold. People in America is dying from mold. Nobody even knows because doctors don't even know how to recognize mold. So that they misguiding you on that specific topic. Nobody even knows we need to treat you for mold because there is no such doctors focusing on the mold unless you're specifically asking for. So it's a multiple dangers in this industry. So knowing the sources is critical. And what's the difference between CBD and CBDA? Again, CBD is just a dead version of the plant. Let's say that when the plant is in the soil, when the plant is growing, it has CBDA, THCA, CBGA, and all these other compounds that are not even discovered yet. That's what I said, those critical cells that we don't see it, but they're critical, they're most invisible ones, they're critical to be as part of the plant and continue giving to the people because science not even picking up to that level yet. So what happens is CBD happens when you kill CBDA with two ways. It dies in the plant or you kill in a lab. 
and you create it through the harmful processes like heat, solvents, all kinds of chemical processes. And it turns this basically um, this compound into the second version that is men's made or dead version of the plant. If it's powerful, if it's working, yes, it's working. It's still gonna work just like Ambien or everything else. But like how this is good for us, I don't know. I mean, they're showing some studies how good it is, but then now we have all the studies coming out how CBDA is the way to go. CBDA is only one way to go. I've been trying to say this for five years now. And when their COVID research came out saying that CBDA most likely can prevent you from getting COVID because it blocks your ACA2 receptors that actually when the COVID enters your body, there was no such thing as CBD because CBD is a byproduct. It's a dead version of the plant. It does not belong to the nature. I mean, it does belong to the nature, but there's a secondary version of the plant. It's not the real version. It's not original version. It seemed like having a human when you're newborn, when you have a healthy newborn, pure spirit, pure heart, pure everything. And when you're old, about to die, loaded with parasites. So it's the difference. It's still kind of the same human, but they function completely different, right? Mm -hmm. Same with the plant. Yeah, I um, <laughs> a couple months ago, I had... Uh... I, I had like, I had a bunch of supplements that this company had sent me and I won't name the, the company. It wasn't, it wasn't good. I don't work with them or whatever. And I was like, I'm never going to take this because their supplements are filled with all this stuff. So, um, this group I'm in, I put a message out and I'm like, Hey, um, you know, I, I don't want these supplements. Does anybody here want them? And you could take them and you could actually report back to me if they work for you or not. And I had one guy respond to me and he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll take those supplements. It was like all kinds of like stuff, you know? And he's like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some CBD in exchange. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, he literally brings me a plastic baggie full of white powder. Like I thought it was cocaine. It was, it looked like, it looked like I was in Vegas, you know, at like a bachelor party and this dude just like handed me a, a bag full of white. I'm like, what is this? I've never seen CBD. At least like most CBD you get, even the bad kind has like some decent marketing that makes you think like, oh, cool, man, some CBD. Like, no, this was just like dirty behind a, like a, like a mm -hmm. Denny's next to a dumpster, you know, like white bag, CBD, like white powder. And I was like, I don't know. So I used it a couple of times and I just felt so dirty. I was like, I'm, I threw it away. I was like, I don't want anything to do with this because like you said, like, like I'm a holistic health person, you know, I a hundred percent believe in the entourage effect. And like, I look for the best quality. Like that's what my whole thing is about. Like I start the podcast telling people to go to my website to get a, a freaking guide that I wrote so people would stop buying supplements at, you know, effing Amazon or Walmart because that stuff sucks, you know? Like, so when, I, when we're talking about something like CBD or cannabis, you better believe like I want something that I know comes from the plant and is living because I buy into all of that stuff of, yes, I want the thing that's living because it has the life, because there is the life force, because there is the entourage effect. Because if you take my liver, you can take my liver out of me, but that liver is completely worthless. It needs me. It needs my heart. It needs my kidneys. It needs my brain. It needs my nervous system. It needs all this stuff. So I look at this stuff all the same way and the way that you really elucidated that, that that's perfect. So I am curious though, in the name CBDA, what does the A stand for? And, and how different is it from like chemically from, you know, because I think the thing with CBD, again, I'm not a chemist. I have some basic chemistry in my background, some organic chemistry, but I, I I'm not an expert or whatever. I think the thing with CB, like the whole thing with a compound is that they say, Hey, we have the molecule and if we just take the molecule, that is the molecule that we've done all these clinical studies to show like it has these effects and you put it in your body, your body's going to metabolize it. And then one plus one equals two and you'll get the effect. But what you're saying is it doesn't work like that because for the CBD to actually give you the CBD effect, it needs all the other parts. So I'm curious with the CBDA, is that also extracted from the hemp plant or what is this A part that actually makes it so much more bioavailable than like a regular CBD that you can get online or at a store? Again, I'm going to really speak about our specific CBDA because after news came out and 
on COVID and research. Since we are the first company who started CBDA years ago, and I was trying to educate so many people, and they told me, go back five years later because nobody understands you yet. So uh, now it feels like a science finally picking up where they need to pick up. So A stands for acetic cannabinoid. That's why it's A, it's acetic cannabinoid. Uh, it, if why it's working better, the reason I know works better because when people come and say, Inasa, I tried so many CBD products, please don't give me another one. They don't work or they give me side effects or they, they give me headaches or can't, whatever. They come up with all these things that they tell me. I said, please try this one. And I, I just, please. And it always does the magic and extremely quickly. So if it's a hundred percent success rate, so that means something is in it that these other products don't have it. We don't have enough science and research to show today how the CBDA or acidic cannabinoid, uh, cannabinoids work because this whole research is gonna start picking up since January 17, 2020, 2022, what just happened a couple months ago. Uh, because nobody was focusing on this because everybody was, was focusing on that pharmaceutical version basically of the plant. Mm -hmm. And that's what you said. It looks like a cocaine powder. Exactly. It looks, you just seen the, I seen way worse than what you just mentioned. I, I mean, it's bad, but people really don't know. Even the companies that own CBD products, they don't know. I just was in Vegas. We had over 20,000 people there. I was speaking and I was trying to educate people, a lot of CBD owners, company owners, and they have no clue. And when I even start asking them about lab results, parts per billion, because I don't know if you looked, but our labs, we do each bottle is like 12, 15 pages of parts per billion testing on anything that can possibly be tested on this human earth, you know, for the, such a product. So these people don't even can figure out how to get the lab results correctly. So at this point, like the whole industry is so behind the schedule because everybody's focusing how to make money. And the one thing what you really mentioned when we start talking, it was a really important point that not single one cannabis or CBD owners even know about this, these specifically plants. I mean, all plants are talking to us, they're all connected, I agree. But what specifically hemp plants do, for example, when we harvest them, before the harvest, I pray, I tell them we're gonna go heal the world, Please tell me if it's anything bothering you. We're going to harvest you. We picked you the best people to harvest you. They're all positive. They're all loving. They're all caring because it's all handcrafted. I want no technology involved with any of my processes. So these plants, they literally crawl towards you to talk to you. Then you uh -huh. tell them they're going to go heal the world. I said, we have a lot of cancers. We have a lot of depression. We have, a, I said, we need you guys. And I literally talk to them. They crawl towards you. Then we harvest them. Then they bring them to the actual, our manufacturer that takes forever for us to do these processes, forever. Then these plants are crawling like a little babies all over the place. You mm -hmm. grab our protein powder. It's not actually on the website because it's still not, fully labeled and it's tested and everything. It's, it's just whatever, it's a marketing issue we have. But what happens is like when you grab this powder, our powder protein, and you release it, it's a powder that you're supposed to take in a minute, put in your shake. It really crawls all over your hand. It's a living powder because the life was never killed. So most even the owners of the cannabis plants or even the cannabis companies, they don't even know this. These plants are capable of walking, crawling, talking to you in the highest power that there is. Why? Because they kill these plants. These plants are sick before they even get harvested or extracted or do anything. And then during extraction process, they turn them into cocaine powder. So mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? So nobody really try to even be gentle with the plant and the plant's frequency. For example, the way Nessus is, the way we did it, we have a heartbeat. So the plant loses virginity for the first time. It's exactly when the person takes in their mouth. Mm -hmm. That's the first time plant loses virginity ever. Not through extraction, not through the harvest, not through, we don't heat our plants. Everybody's putting on these major conveyors, the heating machines going back and forth. Take us forever to hang each plant by hand. It's a, such a handcraft 
hard work to do this. It's not, it's not easy. I didn't say it's easy to make it right, but it's really working. The things and results we see, it's incredible. If I would tell you, I can't make any claims here, but the things we see, I, sometimes I can't even imagine my own brain. It's like, this is can be true. So this might seem like a kind of like a, like a newbie question, but if you don't heat the plant and you don't turn it into the powder, how, and you don't have to give me any like proprietary, like lab stuff, whatever, but kind of like a general idea. How do you get, like, how do you make a tincture? How do you make a, um, how do you make your product from, I'm talking like from a, from a hemp plant. I'm thinking like a plant, you know, the typical, you know, like whatever that you see on people on stoners hats and then the bud. How do you get that into the, into the, into the dropper without doing all that other stuff? That's what it took me two years to focus on, to figure out how we're going to make it happen. Exactly. So we call, we call a cold press for people to imagine where it's, closest to explain to similar processes we do, but it's not a cold press because most people cold press imagine that you're pressing cold, you're grounding with those metals, those metals actually bear off in the product. So people drinking metals, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's why they have anxiety after the use CBD. Um, we have a way, and again, I can't really share you, but we have a way, the way we actually, it's a plant and we use the seeds also. So, but we have a way, the way we actually put the pressure, it, it's a gentle way of doing that. It's very, you have to watch out. It's, it's a week process. Each time you do a new batch is minimum one week process. So right now the new batch, we just did a new batch. It took me almost three weeks. Just imagine most companies doing three hours. They put in these mm -hmm. machines, transfer is over. It takes me three weeks to track the plant, understand the plant, where you at, like it's a, it's a lot of technical involvement, seeing and watching and doing. So it's hard to explain it for me by not telling you the full picture, but yes, we're able to keep every single thing that there is in the plant to transfer in the finished bottle. That's why we have magic results within three to seven minutes. And the plants themselves, where is your manufacturing? Is your man manufacturing in the States? And then, and then where do you actually source the plants from? And are those plants, um, are those plants like subjected to pesticides or anything like that? Like, like how was, how was the actual raw ingredient itself grown and sourced? So as I mentioned, we created the first biological soil in United States. That means there's no such thing as pesticides. And that's, uh, you can see on our lab results, I actually do everything parts per billion, which is the most extensive you can get in the United States. Nobody wants to even do parts per million because they're loaded with these things. And we do parts per billion testing, which is called PPB. Um, so I'm looking right now for parts per trillion. Everybody said like it's insane and it's impossible to even test in such levels uh, to show the world that we're never been even close to pesticides. So um, it's a lot of, again, the things I do to create that specific soil, it's, it's a lot of proprietary stuff also, but it is biological soil. You mm -hmm. grab that soil and everything is moving. Like it's, it's a living soil. It's nothing is in it that it comes from the man's made that actually can destroy the plant or somehow affect the plant's psychology to grow themselves and to express themselves in the healing power so the plants can be healthy to heal the people. Mm -hmm. And so right now you're selling just CBD or are you also selling um, like CBG, any other cannabinoids? So just anything that can possibly exist in the plant, it's actually in our bottle. Mm. So it's only yes. this one product, but it has all of those. Every single thing, including those invisible things that are, as I mentioned, like human cells. I just grabbed 100 million cells. They're invisible, but our bodies can function without. Mm -hmm. So we have it every single cell that was in the plant and the mm -hmm. finished bottle. A CBGA, if it's CHCA, CBGA, like we have it absolutely all. Mm. So you're going to have a little bit of like a psychoactive effect with no. the CBD. Not at all. No, no, not at all. I actually, that's the whole funny part that I'm actually realizing THCA doesn't make you high at all. Mm. And I know a lot of companies right now hybriding 
the higher THC, higher THC, the THC levels we achieved on the market right now, those are not natural levels. Those are never, ever existed in nature, ever. Those are completely hybrided, 100% GMOs, hybrided, GMOs, hybrided. Those levels never existed. So, but see, that's the whole thing. I believe using THC only for a very short period of time if you have a cancer, stuff like that. But again, those levels we have on the market, CBDs and everything doesn't exist. Eric, just think about this. 2000 years ago, we had no fertilizers. We had no CBD and we had no such thing as such a high THC. So the way I developed Nessus, I was literally trying to match exactly what kind of plants we had in soil 2000 years ago. That mm -hmm. was my goal. Well, yeah. And it's funny because you think about like, um, you know, th there's these like folk tales, right? About like people who use cannabis hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Like they say, um, what was it? I think George Washington had hemp plants and Thomas Jefferson. Like, I think the constitution was written on hemp, you know? So it kind of makes you think like, were these guys getting high? And then, it, then you kind of think like that next step, like, but they weren't smoking the THC that we like, you go to a pot store now and it's like 90% THC in some of these vape pens. And, you know, as a, as a former pothead, former pothead, uh, you know, I, I could tell you, like, I could never tell the difference between something that was like 70% THC and something that's like 28% THC. Like to me, it's like, if you get high, you get high and it, it works or it doesn't work, but you're right. Like it, it makes you think like, okay, so what is that effect that you really want from cannabis? Like, do you want to just get high? Cause at that point then it's just a drug or do you want to use cannabis to get this kind of full body healing? It's like umami, Like you can't describe that feeling, but you know, when you're there, you don't go, man, I'm so effed up. I'm high. It's like, I just like feel good. Like I'm not anxious. Like I'm calm. Like I don't want to just sit and watch a movie. I want to like, talk to people. I want to be, I want to like get stuff done. Mm -hmm. I just feel like very vibrant. So, um, yeah, I, I, it sounds like, it sounds like you've kind of figured out the right formula to give people that elusive cannabis effect that we all hear about cannabis, but we're just always let down by whether it's some CBD product or even like, uh, you know, even like THC from the weed store. Exactly. And I see a big danger with that too, because it's a, the research that finally kick, it's coming out more and more. It's been shown that people uh, that have been smoking high THC levels, they can't no longer make decisions in life, including if you drive your car, you need to make a turn. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, where I'm turning here? Oh, I'm turning here. No, no, no. I have to turn another way. So can you imagine if you're promoting this as a good thing, now we don't even have a definition what really good is, and we're promoting this high THC for everybody to smoke, and we have, let's say, 70% of people in the globally, or at least in the United States, can't make decisions on their own any, anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, how this is good anymore? Like, this is, this is dangerous, like, situation we are in. And the plant itself is so pure, it's part of us. Actually, what's, especially with Nessus, again, I'm not talking about any other brands because they're hybriding CBDA right now. They're hybriding everything. So what happens is, like, what, the plant itself, what I've seen working with a lot of sick people, it's so beautiful. You don't have to even be sick, experience results. Your life just becomes better. You're just, just happier. You want to live your life. You want to do things. You want to love people. You just, you become you, like some darkness goes away from you by using this plant. But now again, definition, what kind of plant? The plant that's going to destroy your brain. You can't even make decisions where to drive anymore. Like, or are you talking about, do you know what I mean? So it's, People got this wrong. Like people need to stand up and say, I need to know what I'm putting in your mouth. Like it's important and ask those lab results. Each bottle is supposed to be matched up with a specific number on the bottom that it's connected to those lab results. And if your lab results tells you only one page, no, you have to go minimum five to 10 pages. If you don't see that much of lab results, this product is not tested. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I hope people find your product, you know, and, and learn more about cannabis because, um, man, it is the wild west out there right now. It's, it's, it, it really is frustrating again, as somebody who's, you know, a cannabis, uh, you know, a cannabis enthusiast, like 
there, there's just so much variety as far as like, well, you know, we know that clinically, you know, cannabis is good for cancer. It's good for inflammation. It's good for this and that, but the cannabis research molecules are different than the cannabis that you're getting at your dispensary. It's definitely different than the cannabis that you're buying from some shady dude who's going to meet you, you know, in a, next to a dumpster behind a Walmart. Right. So like, and then it's like, what are we talking? Are we talking about THC? Are we talking about CBD? What exactly are we talking about? Because if you start giving people stuff that um, is filled with pesticides, and I'm so happy you mentioned the mold thing. I know maybe from where you are, like it seems like no doctors are working with mold. I actually am in some circles with some doctor. A lot of doctors are becoming more and more aware of mold. There's actually some really great um, functional tests you can do to test yourself for mold because mold, obviously, if you're smoking weed, you're subject to it. If you're drinking coffee, you know, all the moldy foods, but then people's moldy houses, people's moldy cars. Um, it just creeps up on people. And it's it's actually just, we're learning more and more about it. And I tell people, do whatever you can to avoid it. And if you're getting it from weed, then you got to really look at that too. If you're getting it from coffee, you got to really look at that because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're smoking weed and you're depressed, then you have to understand that there's something else going on there. It's the weed isn't helping you. Um, and you have to make that hard decision. Um, and at the end of the day, like, if you're smoking weed, and I know this again, as somebody who likes to smoke weed, who is in the process of quitting, you like, it's, it's a drug, just like anything else. It's like, I wouldn't tell somebody to not smoke weed, but at the same time, I know where the limitations fall on it. And at some point, like we have to stop fooling ourselves like, oh, it's a medicine. Oh, it's, you know, oh, it's, it's a health product. It's really not. It's, it's just like any other vice. It's how do you use it? You know, Saturday night, you want to sit down, you want to have a bottle of wine. Okay. You want to sit down, have a joint. Okay. In my opinion, the joint's going to be better, but you know, you, at, at the end of the day, are you smoking that joint from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed? Because you say, oh, well, what's, it's not like I'm drinking alcohol. You know, it's not like I'm sniffing cocaine. It's not like I have an Oxycontin problem. It's just weed. It's harmless. Then look at your life and go, well, what have you accomplished? Are you, are you actually doing stuff? Are you actually getting out and killing it in the world? Are you, are you like taking care of your family? Like, what are you doing? If you're just sitting there like, ah, oh, man, I've got a problem. What do you do all day? Well, I play Xbox all day. Well, then you got to kind of look at things and go, you know, I don't know about this weed thing. So um, long rant from someone who's trying to quit weed uh, to kind of point myself, get off my pedestal and, um, and say, you're right. This is, this is a thing like we have to really start being honest about. I just want to say that's very impressive that you acknowledge yourself. This is really a big thing that most people wouldn't do it. Congratulations. It's very beautiful what you just did. It's you understand what's wrong, what's right, and you admit and you say, hey, I just want to improve. This is beautiful. Like, I just want to say, I'm just happy to know you because it's few people on the earth can really do that. It's very... I admire this so much. Like, thank you. Like, this is example how people say, hey, I have a problem. I'm not perfect, whatever. If it's finances or cheating or whatever, pornography, I need help. I need help. Like people hiding themselves. They hiding how you can help someone. I help so many people. That's all what I do seven days a week. I don't do anything else. I don't have personal life. I don't have anything else besides helping people life. That's mm -hmm. all life of what I have. Helping Ukraine right now, helping everybody, cancers, autism, you name it. So, but you know what? For people to admit that, that's where. And I just want to say thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you. Cause it's very difficult. Like, I don't care what people say. And, and that's really the mind fuck when it comes to weed is people go, Oh, it's just weed, man. Like who cares? Like, it's okay. It's like, no, dude, I, I haven't smoked weed for three months and I think about it every single day. So like, that's not a healthy relationship. You know what I mean? Like I, I get these deals that come to me in my email, like, Hey man, you can buy, uh, you, you could buy like uh, what is it? Three grams for 18 bucks. Like that is so beyond cheap. And I'm Jewish. Like, that's a great deal. I live for a deal. Are you kidding me? Like it used to cost 60 bucks to get three grams, 18 bucks. I'm like so tempted to go to my weed store every freaking day. But at the same time, I'm like, no, you know, I've acknowledged that it, it's a limitation in my life. And, um, and I, and I have stakes in my life now. I have some, some serious things going on and like, I can't have these, I, any piece that slows me down, I have to just eliminate it and I have to just cut to the core. And I think that's what, and I've done enough work on myself. Like I know the stuff. And I think a lot of pot, there's a lot of people who are 
in my same position, and I'm, I'm probably speaking for a lot of people right now. So it's not just me. It's like, I feel like I'm representing a whole cohort of people that are being really fooled by this cannabis industrial complex of like, it's just weed, man. Like, it's okay. It's okay. It is okay. Like it's better than alcohol. It's better than cocaine. It's better than Oxycontin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But at the same time, like we can't use it as a thing. We can't justify it. We can't justify ourselves into another bad addiction that holds us back. And I think a lot of people are being held back from their potential by smoking so much weed. And I, I and I have to admit at some point, like, that's that's the boat that I'm in. That's the boat that I'm in. And it's, you know, yeah, is it a struggle? Like, I don't wake up Jones and I sleep great, <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I don't have the shakes or anything, but, you know, it's an addiction. And, um, and I think, and to kind of wrap this up, it's like the cannabis industry is, is, is guilty. And we have to, as consumers, be, be more mindful of these things. And I say it with supplements too. The supplement industry is guilty too. They, they make all these promises. There's a lot of really, like we're talking about plants, herbs. You're an herb person. There's a lot of herbs out there that are, that are junk, that are actually not good for you. And, and these supplement companies are telling you like, hey, get more ashwagandha, get more rhodiola, get more go to cola. And yeah, those things are great, but trained herbalists know. Like a trained herbalist won't say, take all of the herbs. They're going to be like, you have a specific constitution. You're dry, you're wet, you're hot, you're cold, you're up, you're down, you're sideways, forwards, backwards. This is the herb you need. They're not going to be like, well, try all these herbs and see what happens. And people are just taking herbs and supplements and things into perpetuity. And they're actually hurting themselves. Because again, we just have this mindset of like, well, I just do all the good stuff and I'll be fine. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have to, you have to, you have to be able to like distinguish things and you have to, we have to have more intelligence over this. So, um, education, education, education and lab results, lab results are huge. Lab results are tremendous. So now we get tricked when it says lab tested, always ask lab tested for what that has 3% of CBD. Like, thank you for that lab results. You can keep it for yourself. Like, make sure it's minimum five to 10 pages, minimum five yeah, of yeah. lab results on each bottle. That means your bottle needs to be labeled with these lab results. And if it's not, you don't want to take it. Yeah. That's the specifics people want. Like, you know, nobody knows what they're looking at with lab results, but if you give me five to 10 pages, I'm like, okay, well, somebody, somebody had to type this up. Somebody's doing some work. Nobody just mailed this in. So um, yeah, and the parts per trillion, let's do it. Let's go to the moon with this thing. Let's do parts per gazillion. I, I don't care. Like I wanna know how many parts are in each one of these things. Cause I think about that stuff, you know? Like I don't want one little part per trillion of heavy metal. I don't want no part per trillion of like some weird aluminum shaving from a CBD thing. You know, that's the crazy thing too. People don't realize is like when they take like an iron supplement, you're not taking bioavailable iron. You're taking like iron shavings. You might as well just swallow a razor blade. You know, that's like the level of like when they fortify mm -hmm. cereal and stuff like this, that's how messed up the food and the food and supplement industry is. And, and people just think like that food companies and supplement companies have the best intentions. They don't, they want to make money off you. They don't give a shit. You know, if they gave a shit, they would stop selling Coca-Cola. They would take lucky charms off the market. Every single McDonald's would close down. They don't care about your health though. They'd wrap, look how many fat ass people I go to the beach, the amount of like cellulite and disgusting, like chunky side things on people's faces and bodies. I see it's like, how does that happen? That's not what people are supposed to look like. You think Church's Chicken has your best interest? They 100% don't. You think Burger King has your best interest? Coca-Cola's, they don't give a shit about you. They just want you to take their product. And it's the same thing with, you know, all the supplements you find on Amazon, all the health food stores. GNC doesn't give a crap about you. Your CBD company doesn't give a crap about you. They just, they're like, take the product. It's fine. Oh, it's metal shavings. Metal shavings are fine. You're going to get the benefits of CBD. It'll lower your inflammation. So, um, this thing went way off the rails and I'm kind of happy it did because this was fun, but, um, but I feel like, like, like we've got a good, you've got a good vibe with, um, you know, with what I'm really into, which is like quality, like make sure people know the quality that they're getting. So, um, it yeah, is. I, and we, we, pe we people have to stand for it because if you're not going to demand for that quality and ask your suppliers, your stores, your whatever, like they're going to keep bringing you crappy stuff. But if we're going to create a major demand on the market, we're saying, no, I want my products to be lab tested. So what these owners of the stores of the brands, they say, oh, let's start lab testing. So you know what I mean? Like 
if we created the, enough of demand where people asking for and they're not taking your shitty stuff, so what's going to happen? Like, we're going to be able to transform this because right now it's dangerous. I'm not going to lie. I work so many people and to find the right quality herb or supplement or even vitamin C, it's it's mission impossible Very i have difficult. to spend so much money and so many investigations to do under each of those brands for to really know what's inside like and this is my field this is what i try for this is what i live for this is what the god wants me to do but like most people don't have access like this yeah. they don't even have time maybe they have money but they don't have time or maybe they have no money and they have time so it's it's a messed up situation i'm not gonna lie so it's very important to know where you buy and I totally agree. These things that's supposed to be completely harmless can be very harmful. And and it's a tricky situation right now. It's all about money because more sick you are for somebody, better it's gonna be because it's a trillion dollar industry. So that's crazy. Well, Nessa, this was this was awesome. This was a really fun chat. Um, you know, I'm really into uh into what you're doing. I think it's awesome. I think like like you have the right mindset you have the right vision and um you know i hope more and more people like you are really uplifted in the cannabis industry because it's like like we both know it's a, it's a great product it can really help people we just need to see it see it done right because if it's not done right you know we're going to be right back at square one with the whole thing and and people like yourself have worked so hard to get it to where it is now and um i can't thank you enough so thank you for your time if people want to learn more about you if they want to buy your products um if they want to get educated more on on cbda and the type of hemp and cannabis that you provide um where would somebody go online to do that yeah it would be just under nestle's hemp which is n e s a s H-E-M-P, hemp. So Nestle's hemp, the one S's, a lot of times people put multiple S's. Uh, Nestle's hemp, it's, and we have social medias, we have all kinds of accounts, it's thousand ways to find us. If, if somebody's going to look for it, they're definitely going to find us, nestlesham.com. Awesome. And I'll put all of that in the show notes. So when we release this, we'll have just direct links. People can just click it, bam, get to you by Nessa's Hemp. And listener and viewer, make sure you go to Nessa's website, check out her hemp, check out all the education she has on her website. And for more things on all things, nootropic supplements, biohacking, nutrition, head on over to holisticnootropics.com. Until next time, everybody, peace. Peace. Thanks for listening. For more brain-boosting info, in-depth articles, and show notes, check out holisticnootropics.com. 